Josh Rappaport here with Now I Get It Math. One thing I wanted to mention today is that in addition to making these videos, I'm the author of several books on math, and I wanted to show two books that I thought some of you might be interested in. So the first book I wanted to show is The Algebra Survival Guide. I wrote this quite a while ago, back in 2000, but of course the material is still relevant. Algebra was first put together about uh, 1100 AD, so it's obviously still relevant stuff. And this book uh, has done very well, and it explains most of the tricky concepts of algebra and pre-algebra, and people have really enjoyed how it explains math. And the other book, the one that goes with it, is the Algebra Survival Workbook. This has hundreds, thousands actually, of practice problems on the same kinds of topics that are in the Algebra Survival Guide with all the practice problem sets keyed to the pages and the lessons of the Algebra Survival Guide. So you can check these out on Amazon.com and I hope some of you do. Okay, so today I'm excited to present the first in a new playlist and the name of the playlist is Bare Bones Algebra the concept behind the playlist is that these are videos that explain just basic skills of algebra that you need to get down. And this is the first. So the concept I'd like to explain here is one that's explained in the Algebra Survival Guide. I'm going to be focusing on concepts that are in my book. And this one is unpacking terms from parentheses. Unpacking is just my way of saying taking terms out of parentheses so you can then work with them to simplify expressions. So the first uh, situation we're gonna look at uh, involves this situation right here where you've got an expression like negative two plus five x minus the quantity of negative eight plus 12 x, okay? And the question basically doesn't involve the first part of the expression, rather it involves the second part, the negative sign in front of the quantity in parentheses and how do you unpack those terms. So in the second seg segment of this video, I'm going to explain a little story I like to use that explains how to unpack the terms. I call that the moving company story, as in a company that helps you move your materials, your possessions from one household to another. And I'll explain how that works. I'm just going to allude to that very briefly in this first segment so you can get the overview of how the process works. Now in this bare bones algebra um, playlist, what I generally will do is the same thing I do in the algebra survival guide, and that is I list the steps in English on the left side, and I list uh, the steps in, in math, the math steps over here on the right side, right next to each other, so you can correlate the um, explanation of the step with the actual example of what's going on with the math, so you can clearly see what's going on. Okay, so we start out with the problem right here in red, and then the first step is that we isolate the tricky area with this symbol, what I call a double slash, for lack of a more fancy term, a double slash. And a double slash is simply a little symbol I've created through my tutoring as a means of separating two parts of a mathematical expression from one another. I found in tutoring that so often students tend to let two parts of an expression blend or merge into each other when they really shouldn't blend or merge together. So the double slash is used to keep those parts separate. So here what we're doing is we're installing the double slash right here after the 5x so that we have the negative sign and the quantity in parentheses separated out so we can work with it separately and so this 5x does not start to merge with what's going on inside the parentheses, okay? Then the second step is to use the moving company story. As I said, I'll explain in the second segment of this video. But basically here, the idea in a nutshell is that when you've got a negative sign in front of parentheses, you can view that negative sign as telling you to take the opposite of what's inside parentheses. So right here, I just have students write OPP, meaning take the opposite of what's inside parentheses. And the opposite mathematically means to negate a term. So like the opposite of x is negative x. The opposite of 4 is negative 4. 
the opposite of negative 4 is positive 4, and so on. So here we've got the opposite of negative 8 would be positive 8. The opposite of positive 12x would be negative 12x. So by doing that, we've unpacked these terms from the parentheses. And in other words, we're viewing the parentheses as the packing. And by taking them out, we've unpacked the terms. Okay, the third step is to remove the double slash. So here we have the double slash. And in step three, the double slash is now gone. So we've brought these four terms down. Step four is a very important step. It's to group the like terms. All right, so what do we have now? Notice that we have two x terms and two number terms. Here are x terms, the 5x and the negative 12x. Well, we put them together over here on the left, positive 5x and negative 12x. Then we use another double slash. This is a separate use of the double slash. It's to separate the x terms or the variable terms from the pure number terms. So after the double slash, we have our number terms, the negative 2 and the positive 8, written right over there. Okay, and then finally, the fifth step is that we simplify each pair of like terms and we remove the double slash. So we simplify the positive 5x and the negative 12x with something I call the mixed sign rule. And we get positive 5, negative 12, that's negative 7, negative 7x. And then we also use the mixed sign rule here, negative 2 plus 8. That will give us a positive 6. So we have a negative 7x, a positive 6. We remove the double slash, and that right there is our simplified expression. This is the simplified version of our original, more complicated mathematical algebraic expression. Okay, and what I'll show you next is the moving company story. So this is about giving students a story so that they can unpack terms from parentheses in a way that always works, all right? And in order to do this story, what we need to do first is just define some terms and symbols. So here are the items that we've got. Uh, this is why I didn't go to art school. This is the table, this is a chair, and this is a lamp. And this is the symbol for a good moving company is a plus sign. Bad moving company is a negative sign. Just think negative as in not so good. And then this is a carton that you put your items in when you're moving. A moving carton is, there per, is the parentheses. Okay, so if you've got a good moving company and you put your items in, they put your items in a carton, got a good moving company here with a plus sign, when you unpack the items, when you get to your new home or house, what comes out should be the same as what went in. And in fact, it comes out the same. Your table looks like the normal table, chair looks like a chair, and your lamp looks like a lamp. But if you hire a bad moving company, as indicated by this negative sign here, then your table and chair and lamp that go in, when you unpack them, you get something kind of like the opposite. The table ends up being kind of upside down. The chair is upside down and the lamp is upside down. Upside down being our way of representing the opposite of what you want because they messed up. Okay, now how does this relate to math? The way it relates to math is that in math, we also have opposites. And the opposites in math are obtained by negating whatever we start with. So for example, if a term we start with is a three, meaning a positive three, the opposite of three is negative three. And vice versa, if we start with a negative three, the opposite is positive three, or just plain three. Similarly, if we start with x, the opposite is negative x. And if we start with negative x, the opposite is x, or positive x, okay? That's basically how opposites work in math. Now we can relate that to the moving company in this way. If we start without, with a good moving company, and we have a plus sign here indicating the good moving company, and what we've packed in the box is a positive x, what should come out should be the same, which is a positive x. And in fact, when we unpack that positive x, we get a positive x. If we start with a negative x, which is certainly possible in our box, but we have a good moving company, what comes out when we unbox it is a negative x. And just to be clear, if what we start out with is an x with no sign showing, it's very important for students to be aware. There's, of course, an invisible plus sign in front of that x right there. There's an invisible plus sign right in front of it. So when you unpack it, there's a plus sign right over here you get a positive x, or of course, you could just write it as an x. Now, 
If on the other hand, we hire a bad moving company, then we're gonna get the opposite of what we started with. So if, we, if our box has a positive X, but we have a bad moving company, we're gonna come out when we unpack it with the opposite of positive X, which is negative X. If we start out with negative X, but we have a bad moving company, we're gonna wind up with the opposite of negative X, which is positive X. And similarly, if we start out with just X in parentheses, we remember that's really a positive X, and the opposite of positive X is negative X, so we get negative X. Okay, now let's look at a few full examples so we see how this process works in situations that are more like what we actually see in algebra. So here's our first full example. If what we have inside our parentheses is negative 3x plus 4, the way we want to view that is the negative sign, <coughs> excuse me, the negative sign here goes with the 3x and the plus sign goes with the 4. So that's a negative 3x and a positive 4. That's the way I like to look at it. We've hired a good moving company, so what comes out is exactly the same. So that negative 3x comes out as negative 3x, the positive 4 comes out as positive 4. However, if we hire a bad moving company because we've got a negative sign in front, then that negative 3x when we unbox it becomes a positive 3x, and the positive 4 when we unbox it becomes a negative 4. And that's basically all students need to know in order to understand how to unbox terms from parentheses. Hope that helps, and I will put up some practice problems right after this so that you can get some practice unboxing terms from parentheses. I'll also put up some problems where you unbox terms and then combine them with terms that were already there, and then you can get some practice using the double slash as I described how to do in the first part of this video. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.